how do we persuade young leftists to defend socialism uh, with their fear of being canceled? Well, I think um, you have to get them to understand um, that, first of all, first of all, um, that the anti-imperialist countries help them. The reason we have social security in the United States is because of the Soviet Union. The reason we have labor unions and, and the reason that we have you know, working pr class protections on the job is because of the Soviet Union. Look, what was the biggest strike wave in all of American history? The biggest strike that ever happened was in 1887. 1887, the railroad workers in the United States went on strike. And what did they get? What did they win? Nothing. They did not win a thing. They were brutally suppressed. A whole bunch of workers got killed. It was the biggest strike. There's never been a strike bigger than the 1887, you know, uh, railroad strike. But 1934, in 1934, there was a strike in one city, San Francisco, the dock workers went on strike. There was a strike in another city, Minneapolis, the Trotskyites led the Teamsters Union on strike. There was a strike in Toledo, Ohio, among the auto light workers. And there was a, a sharecroppers strike all throughout the South. Okay. 1934. The 1934 strikes were way smaller than the 1887 strikes. But in response to the 1934 strikes, we got the Wagner Act, which legalized labor unions and, and created the National Labor Relations Board, so lab, labor unions were protected. We got a, a program to hire the unemployed. Roosevelt immediately hired millions of unemployed people and put them to work building bridges and highways. And we got the beginning of Social Security. And finally, in 1937, we got Social Security. Why, here is the question, why in 1887 did we have a huge strike wave that won absolutely nothing, and in 1934 have a much smaller strike wave that won Social Security, uh, government jobs guarantee with the Works Progress Administration, uh, and legalization of labor unions? Why? Because in 1934 the strikes were aligned with the Soviet Union. I'm just being real. Just being real. The Soviet Union existed in 1934, and it was having an economic boom. It was having the five-year plans. It was industrializing rapidly. 1887, there was no socialist country in the world. And in, in 1934, when the dock workers of San Francisco went on strike and shut down the, the docks of San Francisco. When the Teamsters, the truck drivers of Minneapolis went on strike and seized control of the city, the strike committee basically became the government of the city of San Francisco, uh, of, of Minneapolis. When the auto light workers, uh, you know, went on strike, there was a general strike in Toledo, Ohio. It was understood that, that these strikes were led by people who supported the Soviet Union. And these strikes could be the beginning of a Bolshevik revolution here in the United States, right? And that's what the newspapers all said. They said these strikes were the beginning of a revolution. With the Soviet Union existing, with the Soviet Union existing, the bosses were forced to make much bigger concessions. And in fact, in 1935, the year after the, the strike wave of 1934 that shut the country down, the USA recognized the Soviet Union. At the same time, it passed Social Security and unemployment insurance, and it also recognized the Soviet Union. And why did the USA recognize the Soviet Union? Because they hoped that if they negotiated with the Soviet leaders, the Soviet leaders would tell the American communists to calm down. The reason we have so much, the reason FDR passed all those reforms was because of the Soviet Union. So. Uh, being a socialist in the United States and wanting a better life for working people means you automatically should support China, you should support, you know, you know, uh, the Soviet Union, you should support Cuba. Look, look, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Why did Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. become a household name? Why? Why did, why, why did the Montgomery bus boycott happen? Why? You know, you know, for years, black people have been struggling for their rights, been protesting and demonstrating and, you know, winning very little uh, because the, the, the government was so oppressed. What happened? In 1954, Emmett Till was lynched. He was brutally murdered. He was a young black man who allegedly whistled at a white woman and he was killed. He was murdered for it. And 
when he was, was buried at his funeral, they had an open casket. So you could see his mutilated body, see what the racist did to his body at his funeral. And it was photographed. And the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union took the picture of Emmett Till's mutilated body and sent it all over the world. And they said, this is what America is like. You know, they say they believe in democracy. Look what they do to black people. And they showed that picture. And that humiliated the United States around the world. And all over the African world, communist parties were growing in big numbers. And the USA and the CIA were saying, how do we stop... How do we stop black people in Africa from joining communist parties? And the Soviet Union, you know, they, you know, was showing this picture. Oh, oh, you think the USA is a good ally? Take a look at this picture. And Kwame Nkrumah was getting stronger and African communist parties were getting strong, stronger. And then and in South Africa, you had armed uprisings led by communists against apartheid. And so all over the world, all over the world, people looked at that picture of Emmett Till that the Soviet Union sent all over the world and the United States was panicking. And it was in that context that it was in that context of the Soviet Union exposing the United States as a racist country, rallying the people of Africa against imperialism, sending weapons to the people of South Africa to fight apartheid, sending weapons to the people of Zimbabwe, which was now, it was then Rhodesia to fight apartheid. Uh, it was in that context, it was in that context that Suddenly, the Democratic Party, the Kennedy family, and a lot of liberals said, okay, we're going to support, we are going to support protests against Jim Crow segregation. And they went to Montgomery, Alabama, and they found a young man, a very young man, who was young enough that he wasn't a communist, right? He was a civil rights activist, but he was a civil, he was young enough, and he hadn't been around in the 30s, he hadn't been around before World War II, so he had no ties to the Communist Party. And Dr. Martin Luther King emerged. If there wasn't for the Soviet Union, if it wasn't for the Soviet Union, there wouldn't have been a civil rights movement in this country. There wouldn't have been. Another example, right? In Monroe, North Carolina, 1962, right? A group of black people wanted the right to go swimming. They wanted, to go, they wanted the right to go swimming in a swimming pool. And they wouldn't allow it. So they protested against, you know, Monroe, North Carolina. They protested outside the swimming pool for the right of black people to go swimming in the swimming pool. And the Ku Klux Klan came and shot at them. So they formed their own chapter of the National Rifle Association, the NRA. They formed the NRA, the black NRA, and they shot back at the Klan with their guns. And of course, they were immediately charged with a crime. And the leader of them, uh, the leader of them, Robert F. Williams, he was charged with the crime of shooting at the Ku Klux Klan. So where did he go? China. He went to China and he met with Mao in China. And Mao personally met with Robert F. Williams. And then the Cuban government gave Robert F. Williams a radio station and so from Cuba, Robert F. Williams, uh, the leader of the NAACP of Monroe, North Carolina, started broadcasting communist revolutionary messages all throughout the U.S. South. And it was with, with and anybody, anyone in the South could turn on their radio and hear a, a civil rights leader calling for communist revolution from Cuba. The messages were broadcast. And it, so the U.S. government was so afraid was so afraid of the fact that black people were being encouraged to rise up, that Cuba was broadcasting black revolutionary messages into the United States, uh, that Mao was supporting Robert F. Williams, that, that suddenly, you know, Lyndon Johnson was forced to sign the Civil Rights Act. He said, okay, we better give people some, some rights so they don't join, they don't listen to Robert F. Williams and Radio Free Dixie and rise up. There, we would not have gotten the Civil Rights Act if it wasn't for Cuba broadcasting communist black revolutionary messages into this country over the radio and Mao embracing Robert F. Williams, there would not have been a civil rights movement supported by the Democratic Party and the Kennedy family and the liberals if it hadn't been for the communists taking the photo of Emmett Till and spreading it all over the world. Um, there's many examples, right? Uh, you know, women, women got the right to vote in the Soviet Union. Immediately, as soon as the Bolsheviks took power, women were allowed to vote. Women in the United States couldn't vote. 
right? And the USA had a little bit of a hard time telling the whole country that the Soviet Union is a brutal dictatorship, but the United States is a free country, when in the United States, women weren't allowed to vote, but in the Soviet Union, they could. And it was in the context of the Soviet Union giving women the right to vote and Soviet communists leading the suffragist movement. And that's true. You can look that up. You know, uh, you know, Susan B. Anthony, the leader of the suffragists, was a good friend of Eugene Debs. Uh, the National Women's Party that was jailed, their members went to prison and were force-fed for, for, you know, protesting for the right to vote. Uh, their members uh, largely were, were communists, you know, um, uh, you know and, and they were protesting during World War I and for women's rights to vote. Women got the right to vote here in the United States because of the Soviet Union. So if these people are liberals and they say, well, they're too afraid of being canceled. We can't support China. We can't support, you know, Cuba. We can't, you know, every, almost every progressive reform that has been won in the United States for black people, for women, for labor unions is, has been won because of communist countries around the world. If the Soviet Union had never existed, you wouldn't have labor unions. You women wouldn't be voting. You wouldn't have had a civil rights movement. If China and Mao didn't exist, if Fidel Castro didn't exist, we would never have had a civil rights act. Look, it's because of the communist and socialist revolutions around the world that all the things that liberals say they believe in happened. We would never have gotten the welfare state. We would never have gotten social security. Women would have never gotten the right to vote. There never would have been a civil rights movement if it wasn't for communist countries around the world. And you better believe it. And nobody knows that more than the American government does. Read CIA documents. Read, you know, the Supreme Court and what was said by members of the U.S. Supreme Court. Made con This is a fact, right, that, that the reforms that were won in this country for the labor movement, for women, for black people, were largely won because of the threat of communist revolution and because of what happened in the Soviet Union and in China and in Cuba and in other socialist countries. So, so any liberal, any liberal who thinks that they can say, well, I'm against those socialist countries, I'm going to hurt them, and I'm going to be for progressive good things in this country is delusional because there's only one world. It's one world, folks. We all live in the same planet. It's all connected. And uh, when the people in the developing world and people in other countries are, are under attack, we are under attack in this country. The fall of the Soviet Union hurt the labor movement in the United States. Ever since the fall of the Soviet Union in the United States, wages have decreased, right? Unions have gotten weaker. Austerity and neoliberalism has marched forward. The fall of the Soviet Union was the beginning of neoliberalism in the Democratic Party, right? It was the beginning of the new labor reforms in Britain, right? The fall of the Soviet Union hurt American workers significantly. Our unions got weaker, our wages went down, our living conditions have gotten worse. You better believe it. You better believe it.